Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to see how to build a debt schedule based on the annuity method. But before we get started, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up if you learned anything from today's video. Let's get started. So this is the file I used in my last video where I just built a debt schedule but based on fixed principal repayment where the principal repayment was based on a constant value. And if you recall, we just have to divide the total debt by the debt tenor, and we get the principal repayment for all the periods. Let me close this one here, and let's gonna see how the annuity method works. The annuity method is a bit different. Instead of having the principal repayment with a constant value, what we're gonna have is the totals or the interest plus principal as a constant value throughout the period of the tenor. Let's see how to do it. So for this particular method, we're gonna have three inputs. The first one being the total debt, which is $50 million, the same number as we had before. Then we're gonna have the debt tenor, which is the number of years we're gonna repay our debt. We have 10 years. And the interest rate, which is 4%. If we recall from the previous video, we also built the debt flag which flags the periods in which we have to repay our debt. And as you can see here, we're going to repay the debt between year 1 and year 10. And if I change my debt tenor here for 5 years, that's going to change the debt repayment period for 5 years. So that's the flag that controls the whole payment schedule. And it's quite straightforward to do it. We have to come up with two main assumptions. The first one being that the period that we are analyzing our schedule should be different from zero because if it is zero we have to return false so in order to return true this condition here should be different than zero and the second one is that the period that we are analyzing should be less or equal to the debt tenor as you can see in this condition here and to check these two conditions true we're going to use the argument and and if both conditions are true then we're going then the formula is going to return true and if you copy and paste everything across here, as you can see, there the, the, the flag works perfectly. Let me go back here to 10 years now. And you can see they're going to recalculate everything. That's for the debt flag. Then we're going to have here our debt open and closing balances. Let's go first to the open balance. We're going to, what we're going to have here in the period zero, we're going to say that our open balance is equal to the total debt which I just put in here. Then we're going to have to repay our principal, which comes in here. And the difference between the open balance and the principal payment is going to be equal to the closing balance. Then everything follows as the same in the next column, as you can see here. So the open balance is going to be equal to the previous closing balance. We're going to add here or subtract the principal repayment, and we're going to sum everything together. Now, how do we calculate the principal repayment? As you can see here, if I press F2, my principal repayment is being calculated in here, right? So we have to do a few steps before. In the annuity, the first thing we have to calculate is not the principal as we did in the fixed principal repayment. The first thing you need to calculate is the totals, which is the sum of the interest plus principal. And to do it, we have to use the formula PMT. So if I press F2 here, you can see that the PMT formula is going to return to us a constant value throughout the periods of repayment of the debt. And that's what the PMT does. It calculates annuity for some value that we have either in, as in the present or in the future. Let's see what the arguments of the formula are. The first one, as you can see here, is the interest rate, which is 4% per period. In this case here, our period is one year, so it's 4% per year. Then we're going to have the number of periods, which is 10, as you can see here in the debt tenor. The next argument is the present value of our cash flows, which is $50 million. And lastly, we're going to have the future value, which I left empty here because the future value should be zero. You can also add a zero here, but that doesn't really matter. And lastly, I multiply this formula here by the flag because we should only have a total whenever we are in the period of repayment. So if I press enter here and copy and paste everything across, as I'm just going to copy and paste here, as you can see, 
everything works perfectly fine and we have the repayment of totals only being accounted for during the debt tenors. That's the first step. The second one, we're going to calculate the interest, which is going to be the open value of our debt times the interest rate, which is 4%. Then I'm also multiplying by the flag because this should be only true when you multiply by the flag. And I multiply by negative one because this is a cash output for the project. And if you have been watching my videos, you know that by convention, whenever I have a cash outflow from the project, I use a negative number. If I press enter and copy and paste everything across, we're going to see that the interest payment is going to reduce as we move along in the debt schedule. And lastly, we're going to just have to calculate the difference between the totals and the interest, because as I said before, the totals is the sum of the interest plus principal. As we do not have the principal, we only have to calculate the difference between the two. And that's going to be our interest repayment. And if we add everything together, as we have in cell I-28, you can see that the total principal payment is $50 million, which is exactly the total amount of the debt. So the calculation is correct. As a last step, we're going to get the number here and plug in here. And as you move along the debt schedule, you can see that in the very last period, our closing balance is exactly zero. Now, if you change this here to 12, you can see that everything works correctly. The last payment is going to be on the 12th period, and the total debt repayment is 15 million. Let me change here now for 10 million. And you can see here, the total debt repayment is 10 million, and we're still repaying everything on year 12. Let's change here now for 10 years. And everything is dynamically adjusted, working completely fine. That's it for today, folks. Hope you have enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.